Hello my friends, in today's video I would like to walk you through video settings on Panasonic G85, G80 or G81, show you what settings I personally use and also show you how I use custom modes for filmmaking. So the first thing that we need to do is to switch the mode on the dial to manual movie setting. I don't always shoot video in this mode, I will later explain why, but it doesn't really matter because you can shoot video in almost every mode. First we will take a look at motion picture tab. First option is the photo style, that is basically a setting that will affect colors, contrast, sharpness, saturation and so on. I mostly use natural setting, uh, that is a bit flatter than the standard setting, it leaves me some room for color grading in post, but I also sometimes use it without color grading. Then there are two monochrome settings, scenery, portrait, custom and vivid. And then there is standard setting, that is the best bet if you don't want to do anything with the footage in post. And then there is Cine like D, that is the flattest setting, really meant for color grading, it captures the most details. I have further decreased contrast and saturation by 3. By the way, you can play with every picture style and customize it to your taste. Last setting is Cine like V, that is supposed to provide kind of cinematic look out of the camera. There is one other option to create a flat picture profile, I will talk about that in my custom mode settings. Second option is filler settings, I don't use those, some of them may look nice, you can take a look at those. 4K live cropping, this is sort of in-camera panning, where you set the start framing and end framing, and the camera does the pan for you, but it works only in 1080p, I have never used it personally. Snap movie is useless, recording format, uh, I just set that to MP4, it is more usable format and it gives you more options. Recording quality, here you can set your resolution, bitrate and frame rate. Plenty of options here, I use 4K, 100 megabits, 25 frames per second most of the time. Now the exposure mode, here you can choose between program, aperture priority, shutter priority and manual. You are supposed to use manual, I sometimes use also aperture priority, which is vastly unprofessional, I know but that is okay because I'm not a professional and no one has ever complained that my shutter isn't at 180 degree angle. AFS slash AFF, that determines what will happen when your focus dial is set to AFF or AFS. In AFS the focus is fixed when you press the button and AFF is kind of full time servo. Continuous AF, uh, that is important for video because the focus mode switches mainly for stills. I have it on and if I want manual focus I use that switch. Regarding AF modes I usually use single point AF because I have found out that it works the best. With 7 to 14 mm lens I use 49 area because almost everything is in focus with that lens anyway. Metering mode, that is basically how the camera sets the exposure. I use the first mode where it measures whole frame, but sometimes, for example, for vlogging, you may use the spot metering so that your face is properly exposed. Highlight shadow, that can actually determine how much dynamic range the camera captures. So you may want to increase shadows and decrease highlights a bit, but be careful, something like plus one minus one or uh, plus two minus two is plenty enough. If you go further than that, it introduces a lot of noise. Eye dynamic, eye resolution, diffraction compensation, I don't use this in camera corrections. Luminance level, that is quite misunderstood setting. It doesn't do anything with dynamic range or gamma. It is basically an information for your editing software to properly read the footage. I think that 0 to 255 works with the most of editing software like Premiere Pro or Final Cut. EX teleconverter and digital zoom. I don't use those because teleconverter doesn't work in 4K and if I have to crop I would rather do that in post. Stabilization, this camera has dual IS2 system where lens stabilization works with in-body image stabilization. Here you can turn it on and off, I leave it on all the time. You can also turn on e-stabilization but that just crops the picture and moves it around so I would rather do that in post. Silent operation, I honestly don't know what that does, I have turned it off. Mic level display, I have turned that on to see the levels on the screen. Mic level adjustment, I have that on minus 7 because I mostly use attached Rode VideoMic Pro with internal amp, so I need to turn it down here. 
mic level limiter i have it on what that does is that if you really shout into mic it will keep it down to prevent unpleasantly loud audio and now we will take a look at some custom settings that affect the video shutter af it is what it says it is it also works in video i have it off because i use back button focusing that is the af switch ae lock that works in the video as well AF sensitivity, I have that in plus two all the time and I would still like much faster AF. AF, MF, that lets you manually focus even when the autofocus is on. Manual focused assist, here you said when the assist appears. In the first mode it appears when you switch the camera to manual focus on where you turn the focus ring. I use that setting. MFS is display. Here you set whether the whole display is magnified or just square in the middle. Manual focus guide. That is a little screen that tells you how far you have focused and which way to turn the ring. Peaking. That is a feature that highlights contrast edges with certain color to let you know that that part of image is in focus. It only works in manual focus, of course. It is kind of aid to make manual focus easier. Histogram, I don't use that because I kind of trust the metering in the camera. Of course, you can use it if you want to. Zebra pattern, that is a useful feature because what zebra does is that it marks the areas that are overexposed. So with this, you can make sure that the part of frame that matters the most, like skin tones, are properly exposed. And these are basically the most important video settings. If there are some that I haven't covered and you are curious about those, just ask in the comments. And now I will show you my custom mode settings. So for filming, I mostly use C2 or custom to setting. And I do that for one particular reason. And that is that you cannot use auto ISO in manual movie mode. And I know that that is horrible and unprofessional thing to do, which is okay, because as I said, I'm not a professional. So what I did is that I set the camera to manual mode for stills, did all of the settings that I've showed you. Plus I have changed recording area to movie or filming mode so that I can see 16 by nine framing. Then I have set shutter speed to 1 50th of the second and save that to C1 in a C2 mode. Besides using auto ISO, I sometimes do other horrible thing and that is to shoot in aperture priority, mostly when it's bright outside. So I have set that to C2 and for C3, I have set my custom flat profile. Uh, that is natural picture style with contrast turned to minus five, saturation to minus five and then highlights to minus one and shadows to plus one. This is actually very close to Cine like D and I can use it with auto ISO. All right, so these were my video settings. Thank you for watching. I hope that you like this video and that you have found it to be useful. I will make a still setting video in a couple of days, so stay tuned for that. And maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss that. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.